Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, aren't those just the voices of the most magical fairies? And we're so glad you all could be here because if you've stumbled across this feed, welcome to our live show. Today we have a fun little project. We are going to be needle felting a miniature landscape. This little guy right here is so tiny and it is part one of a two-part series. So this week we're gonna practice our ideas and colors on the mini and then next week we'll expand it to part two and make the full size. So we're so glad you're here and thank you for checking in. We have friends from all over the world as you'll see. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas and we're watching you all check in right now. So a quick hi to Karen in Toronto and Wendy all the way in the UK. Thank you for joining us today. Peggy's in Mexico. Dawn, my dear friend, is in Michigan. Hi Dawn. Um, Marla is in New Hampshire. Marlene in Oregon and Pamela in Oregon too. Thanks y'all for tuning in. Robin Moonshadow also in Canada and Kathleen in Colorado. Thank y'all for being here. You always make Wednesday so much fun. So uh, we have great things to share with you. If you're looking for the supplies for today's project, there is a link in the description. But right now, everything's happening over in the live chat. So check in, say hi where you're from. And it's an interactive show. We always give away prizes for participation in the live chat and participation after, I can't say that word today, <laughs> after the live feed in the comments down below low so you always get an extra chance to win if we don't answer your question or we don't do a shout out for you last week we had some fun together and we looked at different fibers for felting so we're giving away prizes for post show comments to Mary Lynn and Jill Thompson congratulations y'all you win either a big wow bundle nine by nine of super fun or a needle felting assortment that is a fun prize so you can use the contact us page on our website for everyone else sit tight today's going to be lots of fun the fairies are lined up to share with you a few things you might be considering for your own needle felting adventures and the first up is the lovely fairy angela Woo! hello everyone um, so today's uh, project is available in a kit um, this kit um, like marie said there is a two-part series there's a mini and a full size this kit is enough fiber to make both of those and still have some of the colors left over um, so what comes in the kit is the pattern, a 100% wool felt sheet, um, the, all of the wool fiber that you need, all of these beautiful colors, and a hoop, which is optional, you don't have to get that, and you can add a transfer pen if you want. Um, and other than that, if you want to purchase this, <laughs> it's available in the link below. It's also on sale right now for a limited time. Uh, you can also find it on the Living Felt site under the needle felting category. Woo! All right. So up next <laughs> is the <laughs> wonderful fairy Alyssa. Yay! Yay! Hello, everybody. So I'm here to show you. If sorry, if you liked our kit from today's project, I think you'll like this one as well. This is our jellyfish kit. It comes with a pattern, a wool felt sheet, and enough wool to complete complete the project and the embroidery hoop. It comes with that as well. Um. This kit is awesome. It's on sale right now, along with some of our other Beach Hut kits, uh, needle felting kits like the Beach Hut one here. And yeah, on sale for a limited time only. All right, up next is Fairy Jamie. Hi everyone, I'm Fairy Jamie, and this is our little bee fairy. If you guys are a little more into sculpting rather than doing 2D project, this one will probably be the right one for you. It's um, a really easy beginner set and um, it is also currently on sale. Next up is going to be Fairy Ann. <laughs> hey y'all, thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. If you are feeling adventurous or ready for a um, larger more advanced kit. We have uh, a whole online school for you. <laughs> so I have a couple buddies here with me right now. Uh, this is the needle. This is the dragon from the needle felting and dragon course with Joyce Hasleray. It is all of the needle felting courses at feltingtutorials.com are on sale, also for a limited time, and possibly even uh, supply packs. 
By possibly, we mean definitely. They are 10% off right now. <laughs> and this right here is the uh, Red Bud Reflections course with Laura Rick. So this would be great if you're wanting to do a more advanced landscape. We've got you covered. Thank y'all so much. We hope you have tons of fun. Next up, Fairy Marie. <laughs> Well, the show would not be complete with about, without a little laughs from the fairies. So up is the very funny fairy, Kayla. Hey everybody, fairy Kayla here. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. It's great to see everybody. I'm just popping in real quick just to share our uh, weekly funnies with you. So quick question for everyone. Why can't you play hide and seek with mountains? Why can't you play hide and seek with mountains? They always peak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to my terrible jokes. I'll see you next week. Thanks to Fairy Kayla, now in the field. Some of you know Kayla used to be in-house with us, and she shipped off to another state, but we're still keeping her super close. She's been doing a lot of great things with us and always still piping in the jokes. So thank you so much, Kayla, for that. And thank you all so much for joining us today. I want to show you uh, for today's project. Again, we are making the mini. Let's do a quick rundown of the supplies we're going to be working with for this project. This is our little mini, so you could start with something as small as a 5x5 five five needle felting foam or our little 5x5 five five wow pad. We are also going to be working on the 100% felt sheet like Angela showed you. We prefer wool felt over acrylic and we do answer that in a few tutorials. We're going to use the iron-on transfer pen. You can use any color that is darker than the fabric that you're ironing onto. A pencil may also be helpful and I'll show you where I use that. Felting needles today, I am using a 42 triangle, maybe a little cluster, and a 40 triangle needle, so we're staying on the fine side of things for today. And then, of course, a wool pack. So this is what comes in the wool pack, plus we have one extra punch of color in there. And this is a combination of fibers, which is um, both Maori, Bergschaff, and MC1 fibers all together. So this is the first time we're offering a kit with a variety of fibers in it. Now, if you can grab the kit, which includes the patterns, or you can also just grab the, the PDF version of the pattern. And for today, we're going to just be working with the miniature. So a quick glimpse at this, there's a round pattern that we'll use for part two. This is our miniature pattern, so we're working in the reverse. You have another inspiration image here, and you can also get a square version of the pattern. We're going to start with the mini, and the other thing you're going to need is an iron. I'll grab that for us. We use an iron right here to get our image on, and I'm going to do that quickly. How the iron-on transfer pen works, for those who have not seen it before, is you first kind of get your pen going on some other piece of paper. If it's brand new, you just want ink flowing into the felt tip. And you don't want to be too harsh on these things because you can dull the tip. You want to keep it kind of fine. Working with the pen, uh, you can work, this is the right correct version of the image, and this is the reverse, so we're giving you the reverse. And when you work with these patterns, you want to trace over only the lines you want. So you may not want the entire outline, but I do like to give myself little crop marks for the corner so I know that I'm staying straight. And then on your image, trace over all the lines that are important to you. Now, if you're printing this yourself and you're working from the PDF pattern, we are just printing on a regular printer and regular printer paper. So here you can have a little freedom if you want, not take all the lines if you don't want them. You can make your trees a little bit bigger. You can go you know, outside the lines and just have some fun with that. Here's one that I have already outlined and I don't know, I'll print, I'll go ahead and press this one for you that I just traced so you can see. I usually get a couple of prints out of these. As an alternate, you can reverse the image yourself and you can also just tra trace over uh, you know, a printout of the actual inspiration image if you want. 
on our iron, we are going to put our iron on a hot, dry setting, preferably all the way hot. And if you're working on thicker fabrics, you can also first heat up that fabric. You don't really have to, um, but right now my iron's got to heat up anyway, so I'm just going to put get that fabric hot. Bear with me here, we'll get this image transfer in place and then we will get going and I will do my best to answer as many questions as I can as we get moving. Here's my image. What we do is I like to make sure I have a little bit of a border around my image for the miniature. For the larger, you need a little bit larger border if you're going to mount it in a hoop. Note that the bigger your image, you might see a little shrinkage of the felt so you don't wanna go all the way to the edge. And when you do these image transfers, you can tell when the ink is starting to transfer when you can see it through the back of the paper. And you can always just peel it back and give a look. So this gives us a great, great starting point. And the reason I like to bring in my pencil is I bring in sometimes a straight edge and just add any lines that I want to see. Like maybe I don't want a big thick line there, but I want to use a pencil. So this is just another, a regular number two pencil, an HB to be specific, so it's a little bit softer. And the other thing is on your felt piece, if you wanted your mountains slightly different, you could draw right over that, or if you wanted extra trees, then you can draw right over that with your pencil. So I have one here that I've already drawn and I want to encourage you to have a little bit of freedom where you desire in your picture let me get my thing have a little freedom where you desire you can soften the mountains you can soften have fewer trees the whole point of doing the miniature is to practice your ideas play with some colors and just do a little sample piece before you jump into something bigger so this is an example of a second print or a third print even off my same tracing. And what you can see here is that not all of these tree lines came in well. And that's when you just want to grab your pencil and get those lines in. So you'll see that on the pattern there's actually more trees. Um, and I chose to actually just put in fewer in my miniature. So I want to encourage you to play with that and have fun with that. Get this out of the way. Any questions before we get started actually on the needle quilting part? Wendy was mentioning how she likes to draw from scratch and she was wondering what to use and I think you answered it with a number two pencil. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you start, if you start, I would use, you know, there are pencils that you, there are pens that you can iron away that go away with heat. Um, but if you can work with a pencil, that's fun because sometimes they erase. Like if you put your lines on very soft and you have a really clean eraser, then sometimes you can put that pencil line on. If you don't use a very heavy graphite pencil, then you can erase it. Um, so yeah, if you're going freehand. And for those who are not comfortable with this approach, we took a different approach a couple of years ago when we did like a little winter scene. And I already put my scissors away, but let me grab those. I wanna show you just an alternate approach. And I won't, I won't spend too much time on it, but I want to show you what you could do if you were, if you, this were feeling, what I'm about to show you feels a little difficult. So what you can do is you can take your outline or, or the original picture. Let's say the original picture, because that's going to be the right side. And what you could do is you could cut out the sky. And we'll use it like as a reverse template. So this is just an alternate method of doing the iron-on transfer pen. So if you wanted, you could cut out the image, and right now we're about to start with the sky. We're going to fill in the sky, and you can use this as a barrier of where you're going to put your fiber. For my sky, and you do have little, uh, you have little inspiration images, but I want to encourage you to have as much fun as you want with making your little pictures. And I'll put this little guy up here so we kind of follow him. I'm gonna start with this Caspian, which is a turquoise in the sky. Yours can be any color you want, and you can soften that sky color by just blending this with white or even a lighter blue. 
we're going to go outside the lines on almost everything we do in this picture, and that includes going into the lines of what is beneath. We just want to put enough wool down so that background is covered. I don't want this to be multi-dimensional. I want it to be very, very flat myself. So what I like to do is start by needle felting right along that perimeter. If you don't know where it is or you're not comfortable, get yourself a little, one option is to get yourself a little straight edge like this that you've traced your perimeter around. And we can go just along the top at first to help us get a nice clean line along that edge. Now notice I don't have too much sticking out up here. I just have a little bit. Um, it's very thin, it's very wispy, and this first color I'm working with is Caspian MC1 Batting. Caspian MC1 Batting is the first color. Okay? Now, you can use, this is, a, this is a short fiber batting, it's 25 microns, it's fairly fine, it's fairly smooth, but as I mentioned in the kit, we're mixing up MC1, Bergschaff, and Maori all together, so you can play with them all together. So now look, we've got ourselves a nice crisp line there, and underneath we're going to peek. You're going to peek and lift and try and trace. You can go right around the top of those mountains or right over into the color that's below. Find what's comfortable for you where we have this line drawn. Now we're gonna just use our hand, fold that in gently, and get a very nice, clean line. My approach in this case right now is draft mode. Right now we're in draft and we want to block each of our colors in first. And that's why I'm tacking it down just with my 42 triangle needle. I basically wanna get everything in the general vicinity of what I want. Now, look here at the trees over here. So we want blue behind the trees, and sometimes I even put blue over here on this side, depending on how you're feeling about your picture. So maybe you don't want an even number of trees. Here I have four. Maybe you want three, and you can let that blue come all the way down. But we definitely want the blue to come down in between our little trees here. So be brave and just cover up your tree lines just a little bit and let this part that does go on top of the tree lines, let that be very thin because we're going to be layering wool. Right now we're just in the draft phase. You're gonna fold this over just like before but where you don't have, where you have more wool than you need, use your finger to hold it down and pinch this out of place. So blocking in color, in draft mode, getting everything where we want it. Option one, blend right over the lines below. Let's do that with our trees so that behind each tree we're going to have sky. Cover up our tree lines. And then by the, behind the mountains, just to show something different, why don't we almost go right to those peaks where the little mountains join underneath here. We go from the back to the front, so the sky is the furthest thing away, and then the clouds. Ideally, if we can get some clouds in place here now, then we don't have to try and tuck them behind the trees later, or even the mountains. You can let it go into the mountains. So now here we'll just use our finger, and I've torn away most of this, and I'm going to fill in around this mountain. Uh, just to take a different approach than we did in the trees. But you could just blend right over this mountain line as well. If your fibers are longer, MC1 is a very short fiber product, so it means you can kind of give it direction without the direction showing because the staple length is so short. If your fiber is more like a a longer staple length, like our New Zealand Coriadel um, sliver is a longer staple length, you're, it's going to show more the direction, so you're going to want to mix it up um, and get it going in different directions so you don't see these striations of that fiber. Okay, now this is still just draft, but let's get some clouds in place here. And in this case, we're using our CX2 Winter White. It's super duper white. You don't have to go this white, but it's kind of fun. And have fun with the clouds. They don't have to be in a very specific place. These, I always have them kind of coming off the picture. Somehow it reminds me of Colorado a little bit. Um, 
I don't know what it is, something about the clouds coming across those mountains there. And usually I just put down a blob to start. And again, at this point, I want it going off frame. And then I'm just going to give it some shape. Just shape it and try not to overthink these clouds too much. We are gonna want them to kind of go behind our trees. And you can always come back and add, you can add more white, you can add some light gray. One thing about these little tiny pictures like this that I found is you can get away with, and sometimes it supports the imagery better, if you actually try and put a little less detail and you let the colors be a little less realistic. So not as much, um, not as many shifts between shades. And you'll see as we put this picture together, and I'll share one with you where I tried to be really realistic, but it just, it didn't come out so well because the image is so small. So contrast, I think, will be your friend on these little pictures. And I might let this one. What do you got, Jordan? We have a few people in chat saying that you are the Bob Ross of wool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, where's all my little critters running around? <laughs> Didn't he have little critters everywhere? That's what we need. Birds. We need some, or squirrels. I need a little yeah. squirrel running around the studio. <laughs> as far as questions, uh, Jenny yeah. asks, does it get too thick when you layer stuff like this? It's, it isn't too, you're, you're going to want to layer very thin. Um, there is a little bit of rise to the picture, but not more than a millimeter. And then we're going to, you know, after you get everything in place, we're going to go back and flatten it with something like a 42 triangle, I mean a 40 triangle or a 38 triangle. So don't overthink your clouds, kind of get those in place and know you can always come back and add more and you can add a little... I'll add one little guy in the in the distance here. Mine are, every picture I do like this looks different, so y'all just have fun with that. Whatever whatever you do, just have fun with it. And no, so you're going to want to not put on too much wool in the first place. And whenever you go over the line, then make sure that it's very thin, because the the idea is just that you're going to have some color behind your trees. Now, for this first, uh, this um, these back mountains here, what I did, and I'll show you, I'll show you one of the blends. So this is a majestic blue. My goal with this project was to use a, a few number of colors, but also to um, use different types of fiber to show that you know you can a lot of different things can happen in your picture. So for these two mountains back here, one is a little more. Um, actually in the distance so it's, it's actually a little lighter and this darker one is in the forefront so what I did for the lighter one is I blended this majestic blue and the bright white and we're just going to make a blend to mute that blue look your mountains can be purple they could be brown they could be gray they could be brown gray they could be black it doesn't really matter what color you make your mountains and we're not going for true atmospheric perspective here. We did a whole um, Wooly Wednesday on that one time, um, talking about how those colors shift. But I just wanted, I did want blue mountains and I wanted the one further away to be a little bit lighter. And then for the closer mountain, same thing, uh, a blend, the majestic blue with a little bit of black. And what we'll do is we'll fill in um, one of these and we'll jump, we'll fill in these two. Okay, so you're going to just do a mix until you're happy with it. You might make your mountain really dark, you might make it medium, you might make it straight up blue. Okay, for the further away mountain, and again, I'm pretty loose on this process. This is, this is fun and planning for your bigger uh, your bigger piece, but you can also end up with a great little piece. Um, now for my mountains, I'm just putting them on straight, just like this, meaning no outline or anything. And we'll look at outlining here in just a second. And I like my mountains to just terminate right into my trees. I've got trees here, trees here, and another mountain. So again, I'm only tacking down with a 42 triangle like in a draft mode, and this mountain is kind of nondescript, at least in my pictures. 
this mountain is kind of nondescript. Now this mountain is also very much in the background. So in truth, I don't need all of this stuff um, right here. My picture, I just realized my picture is flip flop. <laughs> They've been commenting on that. That, my is, pic, that my so picture's, talented to be able to do that. That my picture is flip flop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't really mean for that to happen, which is kind of interesting. Um, I, that means I traced the wrong, I, I traced the wrong thing. I think I used this one. I used this one instead of my, well, so yeah, that's gonna mess everything up, isn't it? But uh, we'll, we'll be jumping to the right direction in a minute and then you all like not like me anymore. <laughs> um, I'm like, hmm, why is this backwards? Okay, here is uh, the, a dark mountain and the dark mountain's in front of the light mountain on this one. So let it come in front. Let it just lay right in front of that and be willing to, you know, play with that shape a little bit and let it just go right over the other one. So now you have a little bit of layering. And again, it doesn't have to be um, any one particular way and you can make yours lighter than mine. I I've, I've tend to have fallen in love with the, the darker ones. Okay, so now I have, again, draft, draft, draft of a mountain, but we need our yellow mountain in there. In the, in the kit, we're giving you this yellow bergschaft, which can seem very strong. Uh, this, is the, this is the Maori, I think. And then I'm mixing it with clay MC1. So you're going to get two completely different types of fiber and I want to make my mountain this time a little bit brown. So you can mix those two together as well. They're very similar in, they're both bats. Um, they're both somewhat of a short fiber. It's just that this yellow fiber you're seeing is more coarse and a bit more hairy or wiry than our MC1 batting, but you can mix them up and use them together. So for this little mountain range, and again, I'll be jumping in a second to my actual picture, all I kind of do on this one is put down the fiber and then coax the lines in place so that I'm kind of happy with the shape in front of these, in front of these other things. So I have no idea why I went backwards. How are we doing, Jordan? We're doing great. Um, we had a couple questions about the clouds. Um, could you felt them a little less to leave them more fluffy? Well, if you want your picture to have dimension, but again, I'm not, my, mine are not finished. Mine need to be flattened. So if you want them to have dimension, you could also add gray underneath so that they look a little more realistic. Um, but if you want your picture to have dimension, yeah, then you can just keep piling on wool. But I wasn't going for dimension on my picture. I wanted mine to be very, very flat. So here on this little mountain range or hill, if you will, this is more like a hill as well. I'm letting it be pretty free form. I don't need it to go all the way down because I'm gonna put bushes and trees and stuff in front of it. But I do like to come back and give it a little dark outline underneath. So up to this point, we're just kind of loosely shaping the mountains, loosely shaping the clouds, and just having fun with that process. And you can go back and outline this in gray if you want. So I'm gonna jump to the other picture that I kinda had prepared, and I don't know how I got twisted back and forth. This is, a, this is the original outline that I did. You can see that I have a blue sky in the background, I have the white clouds. In this case, my mountains are on this side and I have this little hill in place here. But what you see happening over here is that I've started outlining my trees. So I want to encourage you to try this process of outlining to see if you like it before you fill in those trees. So let's make a couple of trees and we might want to get in. I don't, we're gonna do these trees and the bushes and stuff in front of them. So. I want to make sure you can see that when we get to the, the shading, because you can have some fun with shading these things, even though they're so tiny. But to create these little outlines of the trees, and you can see these ones that I have right here, these trees actually have a little bit of dimension to them. And I just pretended like the light is, the sunlight is over here. So 
all these trees are a little bit darker on this side, they're a little bit darker at the base, and they're a little bit lighter on this one side. You know, you can play with that however you want. This is just, it was kind of easy for me to do and, you know, doing these, doing even a little miniature landscape for me sometimes can feel like, you know, I judge, I judge myself over it. So I just wanted to have a way that we could kind of have fun and play with it. Now this is how I'm gonna peak the tree. I'm going to start with anchoring my little black fiber and all I'm doing is drafting it out to a little tiny pinch. And then I'm gonna decide, well, how tall do I want that? And I'm going to just wrap it around my felting needle there and use that to create that point. And then I'm going to go back and just kind of round out this side a little bit to give me an outline. And I want this tree to disappear behind that one right there. So it's going to get anchored to that. And then you can just snip it, especially if you have smaller scissors, but just snip it off right there. So now you have this little tree outline that you can fill in. And if your blue doesn't come down far enough, your sky, well, you can fill that in also. Now, like I mentioned, some people are going to only want an odd number of trees. I'm not that fussy. I, I probably, if I counted all my elements, they ended up being an odd number, but, um, and I'm not a trained artist, so I don't know what all the rules are, but <laughs> mine has four, four to five trees. Now you can go back over this mountain, and if you want to add a little, this hill, if you want to add a little dark line underneath just to offset it, you can do the same thing. Anchor your black. Let's see if I can just show this. Anchor your black with your felting needle and then just kind of tease it out, draft it out, and snake it around the back of that hill. You don't want it too big, probably, or too obvious. I mean, it can look like a coloring page and that might, that might be okay too, but somehow just tucking a little tiny, tiny dark line back there adds a little contrast and makes it offset a little bit. So we have a little bit of an outline as our guide. And for these trees, we've given you a collection of colors, a collection of greens. You get um, Evergreen MC1, which is kind of blue. I'll try to speak, it's kind of a blue green. You get Evergreen in the Bergschaft, which is darker. So these are not the two same greens. We have a little bit of leaf green, which is like a straight up Kelly. And then we have this fun Kiwi, or there's a lighter green in the Maori also. It just depends on what we had available. So I like to start these with the a tree with the Evergreen just to start it as a little base. If you just pick one maybe as the base color for your tree and let's just do like a tree in the middle so it's real obvious, but all the trees are done the same way. So you can go a little bit over the outline because you may not want the outline to be very, very strong um, and it helps just mute it a little bit, but all I do is just plunk a little bit of that fiber in there and now I'm gonna fill it in with a very thin, layer. Tammy Daniels, had, uh, she says, I have trouble with how big or small to make the trees or the bushes or hills in the background. Is there a set way to determine that or do you just go you, for it? Well, what you could do is work off a picture, like in this case, I mean, if you want to just go for it, but you can, but, or you can, you can work off a, a photograph and print out, print out a photograph, scale it how you want, and then trace around the lines with your pen. And just, then you can, you know, have a little more freedom um, in there. But so if you're looking for that scale, it, there's going to be the size. What you're gonna see is the images get further away, the size shifts, but so does the color and so does the clarity. And in this case, we're not going for realism, we're going for more folksy, artsy style, as you can tell. It's um, a real picture. This doesn't really reflect the, the real picture. Okay, so we have our base color in there, and then I like to get a slightly darker color on this side, and that's when I go to this uh, very woodsy um, green, and you can even mix it with a little bit of black. And usually I make bigger amounts of blends at a time, but this just to give you an example for one little tiny tree. So you're gonna make yourself lots of little blends and we're gonna go just, and this is kind of wiry, it's kind of hairy for this little tiny picture. We don't need that much. We're just gonna put it here and I usually might start just kind of at the top because we have that little outline and you may not use all that you bring in with your hand just now. So just draft 
drafted on there, which means I'm saying like gently tack it down and notice that we're laying the darker colors first and then the lighter colors on top. Because it's so long and I don't want all that bulk in there, I'm just gonna snip it off. And then it's really safe to kind of come in with this lighter green. This lighter green is pretty light and if it feels too light, you can mix it with your evergreen. Um, just a pinch. And we're gonna put that kind of in the middle and let it be thin because you don't want to bury what you just had. So I'm just going to put a little bit down, but you don't want a big line. So plunk a little bit down there and then let it be a little bit loose because you're working with batting and the short fiber batting, you'll find that when you tack it down lightly, you can do so without it getting big lines. If you feel like you're getting lines in your fiber, then you can clip them snip them and we'll see that more when we get to our big picture. Now right here on this side I want it a little bit lighter and sometimes I like to not even barely see that outline that I originally made and that looks like yellow but I'm using this limey sort of green. So it feels it feels yellowy and that you know probably on just on camera but what you can do is just lightly tack it down and give your trees a little bit of highlight on one side. And anything that feels too wiry or too hairy, just take a little piece, a little scissors and just snip it. I don't have my little scissors in front of me, but you can snip these long lines and just break them up a little bit. I have a few people asking about the angle of your needle. Are you going straight in or at an angle? Oh, you know, that that's a good question. So I don't do that much. It's not that often that I'm going like straight, straight, straight up and down. I'm trying to tack the fiber into the felt and not into the background, whether you're using foam, some people use rice bags, or in this case, we're using our new WOW felt pads. Um, I'm not trying to tack it on tack it on there very hard. In the moment, I'm in the draft phase. So um, as I get to the part where I really want to compress things, I'll go back with either my little cluster needles or my 40 triangle, and then I really will go after it straight down, straight down, straight down. So what you see is me just working how I work. I'm at a very slight angle, but I'm almost at 90 degrees or between 90 and 45 degrees probably. It's just more about how I work. Um, so you do want to fully attach this to your felt sheet and get it all nicely laying down, okay? You're going to want to fill in all of your trees, so I'm going to jump past this tree and let's get to this little foreground stuff here. Are we good? Keep yeah. going? Okay. Uh, Sonus asks, should we be pulling up our picture off periodically? Don't pull your picture up. Leave your picture down. If you're using this felt pad um, right here, if you're using our WOW felt pads, don't pull your picture up. If you're using foam, you don't have to pull it up either. Just stick with finer needles. The more aggressive of a needle you use, the more wool you're gonna push through to the other side. Now the WOW felt pads don't absorb that much wool. They give you a great resistance on the back. Um, but if you're using a foam pad, I would stick with a finer needle so that you don't push too much wool through to the other side. And don't peel it up because when you do, all the bulk that's on the back of your wool is going to give you a wobbly surface. So there's no reason to pull it up, okay? We used to pull it up because our needles were too aggressive and we didn't want to ruin our foam. So the answer to that is to back off and use needles that aren't quite so aggressive. That's, that's the goal. Okay, let's make some of these little trees. I'll show you how I make these little trees over here. I just used this, uh, this darker green in the Bergshaft. So, so easy. And now, you know, in the original image, this was just a clump of trees, but I make them almost just like I make these, and that is, except I just make these little triangles. So, you know, start with one and go on to the next. They're super easy to make. And again, this is just a whimsical little folk art type picture. Um, nothing too serious happening here. Just have fun with it. And they all just kind of blend in together at the bottom. So basically we just want to create layers on this shore of our little lake. 
And anywhere you get to a point where you don't want any more fiber, you can just trim it off and use that. This doesn't become waste. You can use it in the very next tree. So we'll just repurpose that right here and I'll add to it. Now, if your fibers are wispy and not like stringy up here and not doing what you want, just poke them in and then twirl. Twirl them back around like that and then poke them down. These trees can be as spiky or as clumpy, you know, as you want. So I'm just gonna give us three little um, kind of evergreen trees here. And on these ones, I didn't personally want any um, detail, no highlights, no detail. I wanted them like in shadow. Melissa says this is a great way to use up small bits from other projects. Oh, that's a good point. This is definitely a great scrap buster project because you know you could have pink mountains if you want. They could be <laughs> they could be any color that you want. Okay, here we go. So we've got these three little distant trees, and again, everything is just up kind of high. Imagine that these trees are filled in because we're going to jump ahead a little bit. And I like to go ahead and put a dark line. This is sort of like, it's sort of like the horizon line and it depends on how your landscape is shifting. But I like to put a little dark line right across here as my guide. And in truth, in our picture, that black line shifts. It's not really straight, but it kind of goes under these trees and then the, the land kind of juts out here. And then this actually jigs down um, and it's a different, it's actually on a different level. So yours can be however you want. It's just gonna give us a little grounding to this distant shore here and anchors things a little bit for us right away. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop in some bushes here. You can and have fun with the bushes. So one thing you can do is take the green, take your green, you can color combine now or not color combine. It really depends on what you have. So I'll jump in a little bit of yellow, not too much, a little bit of yellow in there, just to give them a little bit of color. And then just put yourself down a little bit, if you will, and just have fun, anchor the bottom, give yourself some swoops go in the middle do things that you wouldn't normally do you know when you're trying to lay things smooth and flat so that they kind of get little swoops and dips in them and even before you lay them down all the way you might want to add some contrasting color in there so you just build the mm, what do i say like the dimension the highlights and the low lights while you put those in and you can go back and add little bits of yellow or whatever color you have. And I do like to trace around them either in a darker color or in the black right behind them so that, can you see all that? Right behind them to give them a little bit of an outline. Again, folksy, artsy, not super realistic, but when you bring this outline in, whatever it is, you can go up into the bushes and then start to play with adding just some shape to them. And then you're gonna start to see shapes in the bushes that you made up, so you can add a little yellow highlight or something to it if you want. Like I see a little highlight right there, and so I'm gonna just drop in that yellow piece and add some interest and detail to your bushes like that, or bright greens or whatever. Sally says this practice piece seems like a really good way to test your color blends. Oh, that seems, yeah, I, I would agree with you for sure. And, and that's part of it is we're kind of practicing for this bigger image. Now here, and we're gonna jump in just a second. So here we have this little bit of land. So just like we've done before with other things, I'm blending this yellow um, with this, uh, some of my greens and have fun with that. Just, I'm just going to fill in this bit of land I've kind of got to get cooking so we can finish our picture. Um, we just want to put this in, and this land mass actually goes, it goes out along the land here, right underneath our little outline. And it's gonna come right down to here to what is our little, uh, our little cluster of flowers here. So it goes along here and it's gonna come down this way. 
and there's a couple of little shapes to it. So if you want to follow those shapes that are in the drawing, you can. Um, mostly you want to fill it so that it blends down and it's going to provide a backdrop for what is to be our little flowers. And then the only other difference here is that I'm going to take a little bit of green and, uh, and I'm going to mix the darker green with my yellow, if you will. So if you mix that darker, this darker green with yellow, you can get this mossy sort of grassy goodness looking and add some of that to your shoreline. And that's try, if you don't overthink it, then it will look a little more organic and you can always go back and add other color on top. So you'll look at the inspiration image or whatever you're doing, and there'll be heavy concentrations of it, like right here and here, and lighter concentrations in other places. And you can always, you don't want big lines of it. It's grass, it's mossy stuff, so you want it to have shape and dimension. Now needle felt all this down so that it's just, again, blocked in with color. And then just like we've done with the sky and the other parts, fill in your water just fill in this water here and get your trees filled in and all of this. And you can see just peeking at that, that it's starting to take some shape and some interest. Are we doing okay so far? Absolutely. Everyone's doing good? Okay, so I'm gonna jump us to here and this is very similar to what we've just done. All of my trees are filled in. Um, my little grassy area is filled in here and my water is filled in to some degree. Now on this water, we're gonna take the water to a little bit higher level of an interest when we go to the bigger picture. But right here, this might seem, might not be what you expect, but we're gonna take our evergreen and our Caspian together and we're going to add some interest in our water. This is gonna give us those, I don't know, just it, they seem, I don't know whether they're deeper or they're more shallow, those areas, but they have, there's a little bit of color there. That's something other than Caspian and it's going to, or other than turquoise, and it's give us a little bit of interest. So look at your picture or whatever you're working with. In this case, I'm gonna add that right about here along, I think I need a little more. I want it to really, pop off for you a little bit. You can almost just add a little Caspian to the green because the, the evergreen and the Caspian go so well together. Susan is asking about if you use a dark color felt sheet underneath, does it dull the colors on top? It is a great question, Susan. And I have one, Jordan can attest, here somewhere. And if you give me just a second, I will find it for you. Um, on mine, uh, the one that I did darker, I wasn't very happy with it because I was trying to be too detailed and I realized that that didn't really support my ideas. Now, here in my picture, I know, <laughs> here in my picture, I want this green here and I actually want a little bit up here, right here. There's something changing in the water here. It's a little different, you find it? Mm -mm. <laughs> We're gonna find that, that black one before the show is up, I think. So here I've added just a little bit of dimension to my water. I'm gonna tack it down with my 42 triangle. The base is already in place. You could pre-blend this rather than filling in with all of that turquoise at first, but I wanted to give you that visual that you can start with just the turquoise and then you can add this depth or dimension to the color on top. where it is um, and now you see that I'm going outside the line so fold them back in or trim them off it, it might depend on how you're going to mount or hang your picture so ignore my messy lines at the moment and then I'm going to go ahead and put in, um, let's put in some of this shore accent. So we're giving you just this really medium brown. This is our clay brown. To get some dark lines along this shoreline, mix your clay or try mixing your clay with the black and that's going to give you some color.
Okay, so the more you mix that, the, the more they're gonna come together uh, and form a darker color for you. Or if you just have a darker brown already, you can use it. Again, our goal was to help bring this picture together without having to have 85 colors. You know, what could we do with, I don't know, maybe we're using a dozen colors in this picture. Um, and you could use fewer but we wanted to see how this would come together. So along this shoreline, if you add some brown to it, it's going to add a little bit of dimension. And in this case, I'm gonna put the brown right here along this side before we get up to around a corner. And then just in here, I think there's a little bit of brown. Like I said, each picture is a little bit different. Um, and you can also go back and add a little bit of a black line or something else so, so that that doesn't look too predictable. Then you can drop a little bit of your green mixture or whatever you're working with, like right on top of one of those areas so it doesn't seem um, overly planned. So pick that out for yourself and get that you know detailed however you want it. Get all of this laying down. And we're gonna get some white here. Now this big area you might wanna lay down, this is when I kind of tend to use my cluster needles. And notice that my action changes a little bit. And I am just gradually poking this down to a very shallow depth. So the 42 triangle needles have, uh, the notches are very close to the tip. And you can use just the first one or two notches and do this really gentle compression here and not have to plunge all the way through to the other side of the piece. And that'll get everything laying down nice and flat. Up here along this shoreline, I want to bring in my black again to accentuate that and every little tiny piece you can save is going to work well. So get our black line going across. That's gonna add the detail right there. And now we're gonna bring in our white. The white doesn't have to be 100%, but you can. You can bring in the white, and then why don't you bring in a little bit of white with your Caspian for just a couple of places where you might not want it to be 100% white. Working with batting, though, is really nice because it's gonna be nice and webby for you. So up here in our picture, we have like some white and the sun just happening right along that distant shore and then some white, sort of the cloud reflections, but you don't have to be overly specific in this little picture. I think just a little touches to make it not so flat, like not just having the turquoise, but adding a little bit of depth with the evergreen is really gonna help. And so we have some lines in the water up there, especially on that other shore. There seems to be some lines happening. Maybe where the water is breaking on the shore or the water is breaking and the sun is kind of shining on it. I should have mentioned how they might use some thicker lines to give it a stained glass effect. Oh, neat. Yeah, that exactly. Yeah, if you like those outlines, that could really, really work for you. Okay, right. We've got to get the clouds in and the flowers. So here we go. Now, I'm just going to put in some, all I've done is web out my white a little bit, and I'm just going to put the suggestion of clouds and not even try and exactly emulate those other clouds. In some cases, all I've done is drop in the white in some of the areas and it still has a nice little effect. So these are all blended ones and you can drop in, when you drop in like one or so that is a little bit stronger but you don't make them all the same, I think it has a little more punch. And I'm not a landscape artist, so anyone who's a true painter of <laughs> landscapes can just tear up all my theories. It's totally fine. <laughs> this is someone who isn't a landscape artist just kind of having fun <laughs> with the idea of trying to make something that looks mm, like a landscape. 
<laughs> okay, so when you tack down these really light little fluffs, this is where you really do want your delicate needle and you'll notice that I'm not spending too much time in one place. What I don't want to do is create these lines that are pulling the material or the fiber taut. I want to kind of tack it down how I laid it down. A gradual, gentle approach to kind of tack all around will be your friend in this place so that you don't create big lines where you don't want them. And that happens when you stretch the fiber too taut. Now, we have this kind of in place. It all needs to be tacked down and it can be trimmed, but this is how we bust out this little area here. So the first is, I'm gonna start with a nice little dark layer. We're just gonna give ourselves, this is the darkest uh, green in the kit, and it is that Bergschaff um, Evergreen. Like I said, it's different than the MC1 Evergreen. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna tuck that down uh, kind of quickly. Be as neat on your corners as you want to. And I don't want the green part extending too much into the water. A little bit's okay, and a little bit up here is okay, okay, but I don't want this real hard line in the water. We want our flowers are like peeking over into the edge of that ocean there. Get this all laid down. Go ahead and tack it down with your 42 cluster. And now's the time when you, I'm gonna just show you how to draw these little lines. So now's the time when you can take in other fibers. It can be this green. It can be this yellow brown mix, not too much of that though. And it can even be this light green. All we're going to do, and you could even mix these. So let's mix the, the, the lime green and the leaf green. What we want are some lines in place before we put our flower heads in. So our little yellow, I, I looked up these flowers. In fact, after I did this wall hanging, Anne sent me a picture. She was at the grocery store in the floral department and saw these same flowers. Oh wow. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so just start in one place. And what we're gonna do is just draw some lines. Let them be free flowing. Let them be not too straight. Um, and let them kind of cross over each other. Let the color vary. Let that color shift a little bit um, so you can, you know, come in with the brown one. And we just kind of want these stems in place. And you do want to tack them down all the way um, so that they're, they're laying down and they're not going too crazy. But if you get them in place now, then when we fill in with our, I'm gonna grab another green. When we fill in with our uh, little flower heads, it'll all make sense. Janine says, Marie, you have made me less fearful of adding color onto other color areas. Oh, it has good. made such a difference to the depth of my fiber work. Oh, that's so nice to hear. Sweet. Well, maybe you'll post a picture in our, in our Facebook group today and mention, mention that so I can see it when I log on later after the show. Okay, so don't let these lines all line up. Just crisscross them. I don't think you can have too many, but um, what you don't want to do is cover up all the green. That background just gives you a nice area to start fill in, filling in all of your little flower petals. And you can even maybe use a little bit of your brown if you want to just to kind of tone it down. Your brown, brown black, yellow brown. It all kind of works in here. Um, as like this little cluster of flowers. And it adds, it's gonna add a lot of dimension if you mix it up and go in lines and don't try and go in little, okay? So now, let's look at these uh, flower heads. Now, this is for, this is the begonia that comes in the kit. And then I have one other fiber. I, you know, I might save that. I might save that other fiber for next week. So this is a little bit of wiry. And then what we're going to do is just pull this off. And you don't want these pieces to be too long because this is so tiny. So you can fold them and or cut them because they're already going to be a little bit long. And all I want are these little tiny. Tough. So I'm gonna just snip that so it's not overly long, but I want it to also be pointy. So when I put these on, I'm gonna start right here and let the bottom be a little bit rounded and let the top get narrow. And you just wanna cluster these over and over. 
Needle felting thing, everything down will really help because like right now my picture is really wiry and this is going to be very layered. So try not to think about it too much as you put them on. It's just that these super long fibers won't really serve you. So what you can do is load your little picture frame up here with a stack of fibers, you know, stack of little cuts, fold them over and then, and don't worry about them all being the same shape and don't worry about them all being the same size. That's gonna make it look contrived if they're all the same shape and they're all the same size and know that there's gonna be layering on after. So you're just gonna fill this up, let them go into the top up here, let them go into the water, let them be on top of each other down here And how are we doing? Are they, doing are, great. is everyone enjoying it? They think it's so beautiful and they've just been so grateful for all of your tips on shading <laughs> and outlining and blending. Very inspired. Good. Good, well, my goal is that you'll feel, that you'll feel like you can tackle a little picture first. So a mini version of whatever pictures you wanna do, whether you choose to do our kit or you choose to do something else, but you feel like you can tackle a mini vision version first and work out some of your ideas before you tackle it with more detail. Again, don't worry about these all being perfect. And like up here, you're gonna want some little teeny tiny nubs that aren't even a full flower. That, if you layer them on top of each other, it's going to look a little more interesting and a little more realistic if you let yourself have those little overlaps and imperfections um, with the background just kind of peeking through. So keep adding your flowers. I'm gonna have to finish, uh, finish my little guy up tonight, but keep adding your flowers and needle felt everything down so that it's laying down really, really well and really, really flat. I'm gonna add one more and then, and so you can go over here as far as like over here if you want with this picture, one thing that I found that can really help if you're going to leave it just like this is to give it, you know, maybe just like a little dark line right along the bottom if you feel like the energy flows off. So what you can do is just darken that little part of the water right there um, before you finish, finish, finish. So go over your whole picture, get everything laying down nice and flat. And then you can trim this picture off into a little square like we did here. You could put it on a greeting card. Um, you might decide to mount it on like a contrasting color, something that you know makes it really pop off and mount it on a contrasting color. You might go on the black like we did when we initially showed you and mount it on something like that. Looks really strong. And then what you can do in the final is you could consider turning it into a magnet. We made these magnets last year, so that means you would cut your background a little bit wider and hand sew it or glue it on. And then on the back, we put our bar magnets, one inside and one outside, so you can wear it like a brooch. Or you might consider, this is a project also on our YouTube channel, making um, little greeting cards. You can look this up on the YouTube channel. These were made with wet felted um, fabric, but you could do the same thing with a little picture like this, is turn it into a greeting card if you like. And um, I hope you'll work on those, and if you, endeavor to make it that you'll share it with us and if you want to come back next week next week we're going to take these ideas and turn them into a larger needle felted landscape and add just a little more detail and we'll do this one on the live show and mount it in the embroidery hoop and i'll show you how i got even brighter pinks in other pictures and the fiber we used for that which is included in the kit as well so we call this hidden lake it's a very simple introductory landscape i hope you'll try it and i thank you for joining me for this one today we're going to give away some prizes uh the gals have been writing up names and fairy Alyssa has come back have you been writing down names I in the have. hat yes <laughs> so thank you all so much for playing with us 
We're gonna give away some prizes, um, and I wanna tell you that there is a kit for this. Did we answer all the questions, Jordan, before uh, we give away prizes? We had a question about how many of these can one kit make? Well, one kit, it depends on how much blue, it's just showing the front, how much, it depends on how much blue you use in your ocean, or your ocean, your lake, and how much you blend those colors. Next week, um, I can show you a little bit more, we're gonna do a little more blending in this picture here. The one color you might run out of is if you follow mine exactly is the Caspian, but with just about every other color, you're gonna have tons left so you can make this full-size image and the mini for sure and if you're addicted to turquoise like I am <laughs> then you that one might tend to run low but you get you have another blue and then the blue green mixture in the kit or blue white mixtures so you'll have plenty to have a, have a couple of um, sessions yeah the other will. Awesome. what other questions um, they were just commenting on how how it's amazing how just the different blends of color can totally change the picture's mood where they were judging the first one that you showed versus what you ended up with and it's just so amazing how the little difference goes a long way yeah I agreed and I'm sorry we couldn't Jordan and I was Jordan was looking all around the studio while I was working to find the black version and it just disappeared mm -hmm. like I have no idea where the black picture went <laughs> but I did do it on black and I'll try and find it and dig that up for next time so what are we giving away Alyssa we are going to give away the 2d needle felting hidden lake kit giving away two kits right now okay so draw a name okay. eyes closed thanks y'all so much for felting along with us Jessica Danielson. Very nice. And I have Margie Friedman. Yay. Congratulations, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I hope to see you next week for Needle Felting Hidden Lake Part 2, where we're just going to go a little bit bigger. All right.